So every year, MIT hosts an integration bee. There are 16 students that compete, and in the end, there's one declared winner. But before those 16 students could even get to the competition, they each had to pass a 20-question qualifying exam. The integrals on this exam are insane. Some of them look like they may even be impossible to solve. But in fact, almost every single one of these integrals can be solved with relative ease, so long as you know the right trick to use. And so, in doing all of these integrals, you come away with a much broader set of tools you have for solving integrals than you probably came away with after Cal 2. And today, I want to focus on this integral right here, this cascading radical of x of x of x. And when we have an integral like this, our first question kind of isn't even what rule do I use, it's where do I even begin? So often a nice place to start off, especially since right now we have the luxury of getting to think about it for a while, is by making a graph. So we can start off with the graph of y equals radical x, and then maybe think, okay, we'll add in the next radical, and then maybe one more radical. And then at this point, we might be willing to posit a guess about what this is approaching. Maybe y equals x? And at this point, we may add in a couple more radical terms and see how good our guess was. Sure enough, it seems like it is approaching this blue line. We might be willing to guess that if I kept adding radicals, it would eventually equal this blue line. But on an actual exam, you don't have a graphing utility, at least not on this exam. And so how would we get to this equaling x without a graph? Well, the first thing we might want to do to this expression is turn each of our radicals into power one-halves. We can now start applying each of these powers to the terms that they apply to and see what happens. And actually a really nice pattern starts to occur. You have x to the one-half times x to the one-fourth times x to the one-eighth, which you can then turn into the sum of each of all of those powers, or just x to the sum of one over two to the power n. So now we've boiled down our problem into solving this infinite sum. And if you haven't had that much experience with infinite sums before, this is what's specifically known as a geometric sum. It means that each term that we're adding is some number multiplied by the previous term. And when it comes to geometric sums, we can always use a formula to find out what the infinite sum will approach. But in this case, I'd actually much rather use a visual because it turns out there is a very nice visual way to easily understand what this infinite sum will equal. Let's imagine ourselves on the number line from 0 to 1, and I'm going to place us as a red dot here at 0. We can imagine adding 1 half to 0 by moving this red dot over 1 half to the right, and then adding a fourth as moving it a fourth to the right, an eighth as moving it an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. And as we can clearly see, we're inching closer and closer to 1, but always just moving half of the distance we moved previously. This motion of always getting closer and closer to a point on a number line is in some sense exactly what we mean when we ask the question, what does an infinite sum equal? And so, we can say that this infinite sum equals 1. We can now take this knowledge back to our previous statement that this cascading radical equaled x to the one-half plus a fourth plus an eighth continuously, and just go ahead and condense that all down to one, which means that large radical expression just equals x. Now let's return to the xy plane and actually graph what we now know to be the function y equals x. And let's remember that when somebody asks you for the integral of a function, what they're asking for is a formula that gives you the area under the curve between two points. In this case, the area forms a triangle of height y and width x. And we know the formula for the area of a triangle. It's one-half the base times the height, which in this case is one-half x times y. Or, since y equals x, we can just say one-half x times x, or x squared. Take a look at what we just solved. We just found that the integral of a difficult function that at first we couldn't even really visualize equals something as simple as one-half x squared. And we didn't even really need to know that much knowledge of calculus beyond just what the graphical interpretation of the integral was. So there you go. The MIT integral that at first looks really difficult to solve 
but then can be solved without even having a knowledge of Calculus 2. Oh, and don't forget your plus C.